Chef Sylvester Nair is the third generation of his family to follow a culinary career and he made his first pan of scrambled eggs when he was just nine years old, when his dad took him to work in a hotel kitchen. Sylvester has created a special Father's Day menu as a tribute to the guiding role that Chef Nair Sr. has played. Watching executive chef Sylvester Nair at work in the kitchen, you're struck by his calm yet confidently swift approach, which he's learned under the tutelage of some masters of the culinary arts, including his own father. It's that special time of the year where we get to celebrate our fathers and thank them for everything that they've done. Chef Sylvester Nair is preparing a three-course menu which was inspired by his own dad in honor of the day. Chef, what are you preparing? For the starter, I'm gonna do a butter and saffron poached crayfish dish, some bitter greens, some basil and mint pesto, and a bit of truffle oil and truffle salt. Where do we start? Okay, so we're gonna start with some butter first. So we're gonna add the butter into, into a nice medium heat pan. And while that butter is melting down, I'm just going to add a touch of saffron to that as well. Not too much, because as you know, saffron is quite a powerful uh, flavor. And then I'm going to throw in the lobster. And ideally, you want this to simmer for not too long? Not longer than usual. However, I do want it to cook in the butter and the saffron, poaching it for a little while so that flavor can go into the crayfish. I'm just going to add a bit of the wild cherry tomato that still has the vine on it. Well, I'm definitely getting that smell, that richness of the butter and the saffron. So I'm going to start with the mint and basil pesto. Now that is sort of a deconstructed version. It's a very similar method of making a, a pudina chutney. Generally, just mint, onion, roasted peanuts and chili and blend it up. But I've just added an Italian twist on it. So I've taken a basil pesto and I've added mint, uh, mixed nuts, olive oil and truffle oil. And that gives me my basil and mint pesto. So just a touch of the basil pesto. Then I'm gonna add a bit of my butter greens onto the plate, which is a mixture of coarse lettuce and rocket. I'm gonna add the cherry tomato that's been sitting in the poaching liquid now which has been infused with all that buttery infused goodness. Infused with the buttery goodness, the saffron, and that sweet crepe. You don't understand how sweet this crayfish is. It's probably because it came from Cape Town. <laughs> so I've taken the crayfish tail, I've removed the meat, and then I've just blanched it in hot water, obviously, to give it this nice red color. And then I'm gonna use that as a part of my plating. It is a plating technique that my father taught me. He calls it the prince way of plating. A crayfish. So I'm going to add some of the crayfish into the shell. And then I'm going to take some of this poaching butter. Then I'm just going to spoon that around the dish. So it kind of gives the bitter greens some flavor as well. So I'm just adding a bit of truffle salt. Truffle is one of my favorite ingredients in the kitchen. Truffle oil, truffle salt, fresh truffles, dried truffles. As long as it's a truffle, I love it. So I'm going to finish strong with a bit of truffle oil. I'm going to finish the dish with a pea tendril which is a micro herb. Okay. It's like little butterflies if you look at them. So just a pop of that on top, it's gonna add some sweetness to the dish. You should give it a shot and see how good this royalty dish is. It definitely looks like it's fit for royalty. For Vesta, I'm going to indulge. So a bit of the sauce. Mm. There's that subtle sweetness of the crayfish in contrast with the bitterness of the greens. It's beautiful. So what is the main course? For the main course, I'm doing a tandoori style lamb fillet. I'm serving that with a cumin mash and a gujijong and uh, coconut sauce. Well, it all sounds tantalizing, but I'm curious about this particular one. Gujijong is made from dried chili paste and fermented soybeans, but I've done my own twist on a gojijong. So similar method, but I've used normal red chili curry powder and fermented soybeans. This is gonna be the sauce for our lamb which I'm gonna mix in with coconut milk. And of course, the coconut milk will mellow it down. Coconut milk will certainly mellow it down. Brilliant, so where do we start? So I'm gonna start by taking a bit of the tandoori sauce that I've put over my lamb fillet. The tandoori sauce consisting of yogurt, coriander, and a bit of lemon juice. I'm gonna cut this up into a few nice small medallions. As you can see, because of the marinating process, it is very, very soft. Obviously, also being a lamb fillet, we're gonna take this to a medium temperature. Good helping of butter. Butter, lots of flavor in this butter, obviously, as well. I'm gonna put the lamb in right now. Okay. So it can cook to a medium temperature and we don't have to obviously wait for too long. That beautiful sound of the lamb sizzling as it hits the butter. 
So we're gonna get, let this go for about two to three minutes on each side. I'm just gonna move the, the lamb around so you can get all that nice buttery flavor. I'm adding the truffle oil from around the dish. As it gets to the center, it'll warm up. And that's just to infuse that nice grass-fed flavor from the lamb. So I'm adding some wild oyster mushrooms and I'm adding some brown samaji mushrooms as well. It's just gonna sit there for a little while. Oyster mushrooms are nice and fleshy, so they don't need a long time to cook. Just let the lamb and the mushroom rest in this butter. For the goji zhong sauce, I'm gonna use a nice big wok, so I just got a nice space because the, the paste is fairly dense. So I'm just gonna let this warm up. Small touch of uh, butter in here. Okay, so now I'm gonna throw in a bit of the goji zhong paste. I'm gonna throw in a bit of coconut milk now and then just whisk it down to break down the goji zhong paste. I'm gonna start by warming up my mash and then we're gonna go straight into plating after that. Awesome. Cool. So I'm just gonna pop my mash with a little bit of butter. I'm sure by now you've gauged that I love butter, I love everything, all the rich flavors. Just gonna spread this around the pan. My mash has been infused with a bit of cumin, so just to add a nice flavor to that. The mash too has a nice creamy texture to it. Yes, and it also adds different texture to the complete tandoori dish as well. This entire dish was inspired by my father, however, his style of plating is quite classical, so I'm gonna go with the higher end, my kind of style. Do you wanna grab that? Sure. So I'm just gonna pop the mash in there. And of course, it's all about the aesthetics. Yes, it certainly is. So just a trick that I use in the kitchen, I, I swing the mash around in the piping bag so all the air gets out of it. So with that, I'm just gonna cut the tip of this off. I'm gonna pop a few dots. Cumin mash on the plate. Nice portion, fathers are generally big eaters. Then I'm gonna test my green pea puree out. I'm gonna go in with some of the wild mushrooms now. So I'm just gonna pop that. Uh, if you see, I like using uneven numbers, so three different colors, three different dots of each thing. Three nice pieces of the lamb fillet. Just gonna spoon a bit of that butter over the lamb. Then I'm gonna add a touch of my goji zhong sauce. I'm not gonna put too much of the sauce because it is quite potent. And a bit of my P10 roll, and that's the dish. So it's sweet, subtle, spicy, and a big kick at the sweet, end. Sweet, subtle, spicy, and a mm, that kick. This looks absolutely mouth-watering. I cannot wait to try. I'm gonna get a bit of everything. Mm, sweet, subtle, and that good old kick at the end. The first two courses have been incredible. And in front of us is an explosion of colors. Sylvester, what's next? I'm gonna do my take on a kulfi ice cream. However, it's not gonna be an ice cream. I'm gonna do a kulfi cream sabayon. I went this way because my dad does love kulfi ice cream. However, he is getting a bit old now, so the health obviously comes in. So to neutralize all of that, we added the berries, just to cut down the high sugar content in everything. I think it's a good way to finish off Father's Day today. Okay, so I'm gonna start with chopping up some nice roasted pistachios. And I've lightly salted them as well to put a bit of a zing on the dish. Okay, so that's gonna go straight into my chopping bowl. Okay, so I'm gonna add a bit of the buttercream. And then I'm gonna add the rose syrup. A bit of my mango puree. And then I'm gonna add a nice helping of this fatty cream. Okay, I'm just gonna add a touch more of the rose syrup. For the berries, Old strawberry, old gooseberries, nice raspberries, some blueberries, and sugar. Now I'm gonna go straight into plating the dish. Berries on its own, when it's whole, it just looks absolutely amazing. On the gooseberries, you're gonna kinda get a, a sour kick. The blueberry, you're gonna get a sweet, subtle strawberry, nice and sweet. You're gonna finish well with a creamy raspberry flavor. Anybody knows what coffee ice cream looks like, it certainly looks like this. I'm just gonna scoop that over. That looks beautiful. Okay, I'm gonna add some of my Swiss meringue over this now. I'm gonna torch that up a bit just for some nice color. So also just adding a different element to the dish. I'm gonna garnish with a touch of some colored pansies. Everything on the plate's edible. I'm gonna grab a spoon for you. 
and you can dig right in. Mm. Literally getting goose pimples. The textures is coming through all the different flavors. The perfect way to end a meal. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Sylvester, please give us a message for all the fathers out there and to yours. Uh, especially to my dad, I would like to say um, Happy Father's Day to you. Thank you for everything you've done in my life. And to all the other dads and kids out there, love them while they're here and honor them while they're here too. Happy Father's Day. And on that note, this has been a masterclass in terms of cooking. Happy Father's Day. <laughs>